Hey everyone, welcome to this video. I just wanted to talk very briefly about knowledge. Um, epistemology would be the field of philosophy that deals with knowledge and the knowing of things. And as someone who does uh, programming, very often Stack Overflow is a well-known website where you would go to Stack Overflow and you can find all sorts of questions that have been asked probably about any programming question you have. But there's maybe a growing concern within me, at least I had concern over my use of Stack Overflow a lot. And in consequence, I'd say months ago, I sort of decided that I'm going to stop using it so much and instead try to learn my information in a slower way if that makes any sense. Now, it sounds all often awful negative, right? If we're going to learn information, wouldn't we want to learn it as fast as possible? But I would argue not necessarily so, and for two main reasons. One, I think the retention of memory has to do with two primary things. The one is, how much did you struggle to learn that memory? All right, I'm going to write, type that on the screen. I firmly believe that the more you have struggled to learn something, the better you will retain it. And if you just think about your life and think of all sorts of examples, if you had to work your butt off, work hard, you know, you're struggling, you're thinking through it, when you come out of it, I think you are going to know it best. That's why sometimes I think people who talk about that they have uh, mathematical deficiencies or something, I think anybody who's overcome a weakness, it, it will be like a super strength. Anybody who's overcome something that was hard to understand, a concept, it will become a super concept to them. They'll understand it so well. Um, so I think that's one aspect. How much did you struggle to learn that thing? And part of that is the time in which it takes to learn it, right? If you have to search and search and search, it's like an explorer looking for a treasure. You are going to very much... Uh, appreciate the treasure more. You're going to savor it and your mind will retain it more. So that is one aspect right there. And the other aspect is just how excited are you when you receive that knowledge? They kind of go together. Obviously, if you struggled more, you're more excited. But, but we all know that um, if you care and are passionate about a certain field, you're going to remember that stuff more. Uh, like, I've forgotten most of my college chemistry because I really didn't care about it much. It wasn't that interesting to me. And you know there's things like that for you. The things that you care about and are passionate about, you are more likely to retain. Of course, you have a little bit less control over that as you do how much you struggle. But the interesting thing is you can choose to struggle. And that could be a good thing. You can choose to struggle in your endeavor, your quest, your journey for knowledge. And I believe it really bears more fruit that way. And Stack Overflow is the perfect example because when you come across a programming problem, it's like an instinct. It's kind of like when people whip out their phone just on an elevator or something and they're not even have anything to do on it. It's just an instinct. You know, Stack Overflow, how do I do this? Up, oh, Google, there it is. And I think it's so much better though, in most circumstances, to read longer documentation, to hunt for our answer rather than be fed it. And that quest, that journey, will ultimately shape us and mold us into better professionals if we're doing professional work or students if we're students. I, I think that's why a lot of students struggle. They actually, they don't want to take the time to, as they say, read the documentation and do that that sort of longer, uh, more strenuous work. Instead, getting fed the answer instantaneously will help you in the moment. But think about how much less struggle there is. How well is someone really going to retain that information and it's also less exciting then it's a lot less exciting when it's fed to you the sense of discovery is lost and we need to reclaim the sense of discovery in learning information when you hunt and sleuth there is the sense of discovery so there's both struggle and excitement excitement is the other aspect that's the other aspect that will control uh, how well you retain information by my theory at least, but I think experience says that this is very much true. Now back to Stack Overflow, I have here open, I was looking through my history in my web browser, I saw Stack Overflow. What are the differences between a pointer variable and a reference variable? In particular, I'm referring to C++, because some months ago I started going on an endeavor to learn more and more about C++, because I think it's a beautiful language, so much better than Python, story for another day. I mean, they all have their purposes, I know. Everything is circumstantial. 
you know, but you can also learn this information. And I did a lot of reading through these Microsoft documentations on C++. And I'm so happy I did because if you just look scrolling through this information here, you learn so much more. And here's a whole section here on references, and down here there's a whole other page on pointers. So I can learn that same information most likely, and maybe if there's a misunderstanding, then I will use Stack Overflow for clarity. Now, of course, in the professional world, you might be on a time demand, and so sometimes Stack Overflow makes more sense. You just ask a question, boom, there's my answer. And this is similar to how artificial intelligence is moving, right? You just ask it the question, and boom, there's the answer. Um, there's no struggle with this. There's no discovery. There's no adventure, no journey. And I worry that the shift in our modern world and its epistemological conquest has lacks all the things that in the old school days used to be there. Even just like searching for something in a book, table of contents. How much do I use control F? Of course I'm going to use control F if I got this massive PDF. I work with microcontrollers, uh, for example. Let me just search for this PIC microcontroller made by Microchip. And here's one right here, the PIC 18F46K22. If you look at this data sheet, this is 539 pages. Of course, there's a table of contents, but you know how easy it is to control F and find my one little thing? But when you take the long road, what happens is you make other discoveries along the way that you did not see coming. And that is one of the exciting parts about actually forcing yourself to struggle more to learn stuff because I really believe in the end it will shape your um, your mind much better your way of thinking and your just your disposition as a person who goes about problem solving and using tools for a greater good so that that's, those are just my thoughts I had for this video I just wanted to share that that think about when you learn things or when you're on the quest for learning things am I choosing to take the fastest path or am I choosing to take the path that will best shape me and best shape my intellect? Because we should ultimately do what will best shape our intellect. Even doing uh, like an experiment, something hands-on is often good. Uh, I know of a priest who went into the middle of the ocean. He's on YouTube. His name is Father Mark Goring. And he literally dropped a drop of water in the middle of the sea. Don't know if it was a lake or an ocean or whatever, but he dropped a water drop water into the middle of the sea just to exemplify and put um, serve as a visual reminder of something in Sirach, which says that all the days of our time are like a drop of water in the ocean of eternity. And I'd love something like that. I think that captures the sense of discovery and quest that we need for knowledge. So Stack Overflow is just a perfect example. But if you look around in life at, at how we can learn things so easily, I worry that it makes us like empty shells. We're not using our intellects enough. We're not just journeying and discovering and we're not struggling enough. Watch any adventure like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit and just think of all the stuff going on in an adventure like that uh, that you can learn that otherwise you can't just learn uh, without that journey, without that struggle. And even though that's fiction, there's a lot of truth to it. Just because something's fictional uh, doesn't mean it doesn't have a lot of truth in it. So that's all I wanted to share. Just think about how you learn and yep, <laughs> have a great day.